Microsoft released the SharePoint Framework version 1.19 on April the 30th, 2024. And this release features one new thing, a few updates, and one deprecation. Now this update included the following things. A new adaptive card extension template for displaying the line chart data visualization. One minor update to the adaptive card extension search template. One dependency was updated. And some accessibility improvements to web part property pane controls. And then finally, there was one deprecation. Now this is a relatively small release, probably in preparation for the Microsoft 365 community conference that was in early May in Orlando and the Microsoft Build conference that was in Seattle later in May of 2024. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Andrew. And if this topic interests you, please hit that like button below the video. It helps me reach more people just like you and grow this channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel with the button below the video to see when I publish more videos for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure full stack developers. And check out my bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about the same topics and share the most important news in the Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure space for full stack developers delivered straight to your inbox. So what's new in this release? Well, a new template for the adaptive card extensions or ACEs has been added to the SharePoint framework. The data visualization card template enables the creation of simple charting controls and solutions within our ACEs. Now, this template is specifically designed for implementing line charts, and it allows us to display one or more line charts that represent a series of data, providing a quick overview of how data progresses over time. Now, here you can see on the x-axis, you can specify the date, and on the y-axis, you can set the value. And if you have more than one item listed, for instance, three items, you can also specify the color of the line. Now this implementation is simple, it's pretty straightforward as well. And if you previously work with ACEs, it's essentially the exact same process and code. In the line chart view object, uh, we can specify the data visualization type using the body property. And currently this is set to line. Now that suggests we might be able to use other types like pie charts in the future. Have to cross our fingers and keep, in, and keep watching what Microsoft does here. There's another property called series. That's an array containing a collection of objects. Now these objects have two properties, data, and a latest data point label. The latest data point label property allows us to label the chart or the line at the final data point. The data property represents a series of data with, with X and Y coordinates. The X coordinate is the date and the Y coordinate is the value that you want to specify. Now this is how the graph is going to be displayed. For larger cards, you have the option to position the chart on the far right hand side and include a title component or a header such as the sales projection as you can see here. Now in the footer, you can also specify an action, such as selecting a button that'll open a quick view card. This is gonna provide even more data or details about the information that you're viewing. So in the picture here, you can see that we have the view details uh, button. Now let's take a look at the changes that Microsoft has incorporated in this release of the SharePoint framework. Now a significant update to is the upgrade of Webpack from version four to version five, specifically version 5.88.1. Now, this is a welcome update, given that Webpack 5 has been around for nearly four years, having been released in October of 2020. This change is unlikely to greatly affect your SharePoint framework projects unless you're customizing the Webpack configuration, as I demonstrate in the ultimate bundle of my Mastering the SharePoint Framework course. Now, another change affects the ACE search template. The footer property was once required, but now it's optional. It's no longer necessary to include it. Now, I do want to clarify one point that is not in the release notes, but has caused some confusion. Microsoft incorrectly stated in a couple different instances, such as the community call on May the 16th of 2024, that the latest SharePoint framework release, this release 1.19, included an update to the Fluent UI React version that's supported by the SharePoint framework. Until now, we've been using Fluent UI uh, React version 8. That was added to the SharePoint framework in the version 1.18 release, back in September of 2023. Now there's been some confusion that Microsoft updated this to the Fluent UI React version nine in the SharePoint Framework 19 release. That is not accurate. There has been no change. The current version of the SharePoint Framework 1.19.0 still uses Fluent UI React version eight, specifically version 8.106.4. We've had no change from that since it was originally added in uh, the SharePoint Framework 1.18 release back in September of 2023. Now, additionally, Microsoft has made some updates to web part property pane controls, mainly focusing on accessibility. 
Now, I noticed some of these features were missing from the controls a few SharePoint Framework releases ago, and I highlighted those issues in the issue list. It appears that Microsoft has been rectifying and updating these issues, and this includes several updates that are included in this SharePoint Framework release. So what did they update? The following controls got a few new properties added. The property pane checkbox now has an ARIA label property. The property pane choice group now has an image alt property for when you're using images in your choice group. The property pane dropdown control now has an ARIA description property. And the icon picker and the thumbnail picker controls now have a disabled property that you can disable the pickers. And the toggle control also has an inline uh, label property. Now previously, the label control displayed the label on one horizontal line uh, as the label. And then right below it on the next line is where we have the actual control and it's on and off text that were next uh, to the control. But now if you set the inline label, um, everything is going to be included on a single line. So you'd have the label and you'd have the control right next to it. So that would be no longer separated by two different lines. Now this release does include a single deprecation to the SharePoint framework. Microsoft removes support for Node.js version 16 in this SharePoint Framework 1.19 release. Now, this means that only Node.js version 18 is the only supported version to, for Node with the SharePoint Framework version 1.19. It's also worth noting that the previous version of the SharePoint Framework 1.18 and 18.1 and 1.18.2, uh, they also supported Node.js 18. Now that's a wrap on the latest release of the SharePoint Framework 1.19. As I said, it's a pretty small release. So far, I haven't seen any issues get reported from the SharePoint Framework 1.19 release, but history has shown us that there's almost always a regression with one of these releases. Usually, I recommend developers hold off on upgrading your projects for about three weeks after the release to see if anybody finds anything. But as this one's been out for a couple weeks, I think you're probably safe to move forward and upgrade your projects. What do you think about this update to the SharePoint framework? Let me know by dropping a comment below the video and let me know if you wanna see more videos about the SharePoint framework. And if you like this video or you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel by reaching more people just like you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel by smashing that subscribe button below the video so you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers just like you on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure Topics. And let me know if you wanna see more videos and episodes about the SharePoint framework. Again, I'm Andrew Connell, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.